Hey guys, uh, in this video I want to get into why I'm going to move away from trying to enter on limit orders and why I'm going to focus trying to enter the market on uh, market and stop orders. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the, of the different entry order types um, and why I think that uh, overall I'm, I don't think that trying to enter in on limits is, uh, is the right way to go for me. So, as you know, I want to be a professional scalper, meaning short trades, short-term trades, and high-frequency trading. And the issue with limit orders is that you're really guessing, and you really don't know how far the market's going to go, and it's a big contract, and I'll, I'll, first, I'll tell you the advantages of a limit order. So when you enter in on a limit, you're not paying slippage, and your executions, your fills are going to be more precise. Okay, so you, you are not paying spread. You're not going to get slippage. You're entering in on a limit, right? Fill me at this price or better. But in so many instances, and I don't know if Michael's ever talked about this, but let's say you're back here, for example, and this was Thursday's trading. Okay. Let's say that you're sitting and the market is right there and you could see that there's a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency sitting below price and you could see that price is drawing down to it. Well, Michael teaches that you can draw these things out in two quarters, right? So 25, 50, and 75. Do you know whether that BISI is going to be fully redelivered right before it happens, like 10 minutes before it happens? No, you don't. Do you know, like Michael teaches that the ICT breaker is a low, high, low, right? Low, high, low. That's a bullish breaker. This is also a bullish breaker. Low, high, low. And he teaches that you can enter in on that manipulation leg. The issue is if the market is, is just taking its steady time to go in one direction, you're going to get multiple breakers that form in the same direction and you don't know which one is actually going to stop price and turn it around. And by trying to enter in on, on limits, you're kind of going against institutional order flow. You're going against a market that has already shown a willingness to go down and you're trying to long it. And that's why I'm I'm kind of done with trying to enter in on turtle soup patterns, um, advanced breaker block theory, trying to hit the absolute bottom uh, or bottom or top ticks uh, on that manipulation leg. Um, you know, Michael can obviously on a simulated trading trade as many contracts as he wants, but I have a daily loss limit on my top step account, three, $3,000. Okay, so I was down today, 434.16. So we'll come back and trade Monday. I really need higher percentage, a higher percentage strike rate because I just can't afford that many losses, even on one contract. So how do I do that? So what are the advantages of entering in? Uh, well, the advantages of entering in on a limit order is you're going to get better fills and executions. And if the market is going to turtle soup like it did here, really the only way that you can get in with a, a decent size profit, right, a 20 point move, is to enter in above that prior high on a limit or above that prior high on a limit. But I'm again going to ask you a very simple question. A very, very simple question. Okay. Um, a very simple question, right? Which is, do you know exactly how far the market is going to go before it turns around? Like if you've got two highs, so for example, when we were sitting back here and the market was, this was during the London session, I knew, I, I had a strong feeling that the market was going to run that 0200 high, but while the market was moving up in a strong way, it could have easily also taken out the, the New York PM high. And do you, like, do you know when the market is sitting right there, you have a good idea it's probably taken out that first high, and I and I did take that trade. But it could end up coming and taking out that high as well, and you don't really know. So if you're entering in short on a turtle soup, 
You enter short here, but it's going up to that high. That's a 10 point loss. That's 10 points of drawdown immediately. And that's an issue. So the problem with the limit order is that you don't you don't know and you're kind of going against the, you're going against a market that has already shown a willingness to go up and you're shorting it. Or you're you're you have a market that's shown a willingness to go down and hit sell side targets and you're longing it. Is it possible? Well, yeah. Yeah, I've taken plenty of trades where it works. But let's move on to why I'm, I'm not going to be using limit order entries anymore. I'm going to enter in at the market or uh, stop entries, a lot of stop entries. So what are the advantages of entering in at the market? Let's first talk about that and not a stop entry. So, well, let's start with the disadvantages. The disadvantages of entering in at the market is you are going to pay the spread. It's two, three, five, two, three, two to three ticks, one, two or three ticks. You're going to pay spread and you're going to get slipped. You're not going to always get the best fills. In fact, you count on not getting a good fill. But you're paying for information. You're paying, you're paying for information, right? You're waiting to see what the market is doing. You, you, know, you might have multiple PD arrays or multipliers that are kind of running up. You've got multiple ideas running in your head. And you don't know which one is going to stop price necessarily. Like, you know, there's multiple things that are happening all the time. That was go to regular trading hours. That was a regular trading hours gap. That's a bullish breaker right there, low, high, low. There's blocks in there. There's there's civvies and fair value gaps. And also there were just relative equal lows over here. It's just a liquidity target that we ran. Now, when you're sitting up here the and the market, you know, it, you can tell that the market's probably at least drawing down to that low and it's probably drawing down to opening range gap. But do you know if it's going to get to those equal relative equal lows? No, you have no way of knowing which PD array is going to stop it beforehand, especially not in the moment. Like, yeah, obviously in hindsight you do, and you have you have different multipliers that are running through your mind, and and um, you know. But you, if you try and if you try and enter in on the opening range gap like I did today, well, it went down another fifty points, and that's that's not acceptable, right? That's just not acceptable. So if you're trading with a huge drawdown, then yeah, I guess you can enter in on limit orders, but I, I'm not. I'm trading with a $3,000 drawdown per day. And so that means that my strike rate's gotta be high. It's gotta be high. So entering in at the market, you are paying for more information. You're waiting and then you're gonna enter in um, as, the, as, as you see something. Now let's talk about like Al Brooks style trading and entering in on stops. So the stop order is kind of my favorite entry mechanism now and I'm going to tell you why. The limit order you're, you're entering in against current order flow which is very dangerous. The market order you're going to take slippage and you're going to take um, like you know, you don't know exactly how much time you need to wait for more information, but the market order is another good option. Let's talk about entering in on a stop order and and ways that you can do that. So, see that you you see the markets come down into this this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, and it closes right on it, right? Block theory or order blocks are, it, well, I mean, same thing with fair value gaps, but order blocks are. A really good way to enter in a stop order so you know that if the market makes that green candle if you trade one tick above that black candle there that order flow is probably changed right and that we are going to go take out some sort of a buy side target um, you enter in on the stop there you take you know you put your stop down here and so you're triggered you're triggered on a buy stop and then your sell stops down here you see the market does put you into drawdown but it pretty quickly we end up going and running those equal highs. Okay, so is it the are you missing out on points, right? Well, you're missing out on ten points, but the thing moved up another twenty points. So what's the issue with a stop order? Well, you're not going to get in at the absolute bottom and top tick. I mean, you can't if you're entering it on a stop order. You cannot possibly be in at the actual top or bottom, but you're paying for more information. You're paying for patience and discipline and paying for 
seeing what you want to see in the market, like, for example, creating that bullish order block. I'll give you some more examples of entering in on stops and, and why it's, uh, it's going to be my preferred method. Let's go to our regular trading hours. So if you're entering in on a stop, can you get short here? No. No, obviously not, right? But let's see where we had an option to enter in on a stop that would have been a pretty reasonable option. Let's go to our New York AM session and, and have a look where we could enter in on a stop. We go down to our two minute chart. You know you're not you're not getting short right there. Okay, that's fine. But market trades below that candle after a very extended move, you could enter in on a stop there. Uh, below one tick below that green candle would be a pretty decent uh, stop entry, and then aim for those lows. Okay. Could I see that? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I know that that's a one push up and then a second push up, and then if you trade one tick below, that's a pretty good sign that uh, order flow has probably changed. Let's see if we can find other decent looking stop entries. Let's see if we can find any on the five minute. So there is an order block right there. And it became a bearish order block when price traded one tick below it. So you get short right there. And yeah, did you sacrifice points? Well, yeah, you did. You, you sacrificed like 20 points. But the market went down another, you know, multiple standard deviations down below that low and even lower. So are you sacrificing points? Yes. You sacrificed 24 points, but the market went down to that low, another 53 points, and it went down to opening range gap, which is 100 points. So... You can do the math on that. Like when you get a good stop entry, uh, the market is going to, you, it's already shown a willingness to go down. And that's how you should view the market. Uh, it's already shown once it ticks below that order block there. Yeah, you get immediately taken into drawdown. So you put your stop up above that high right there. And you aim for that low or you aim for opening range gap, both of which were hit. Even entering in on a stop here, you got a shot lower as well. Um, you are paying for information. You are paying for a change in order flow. You're, you are paying for the market to show you that willingness uh, already to go in your direction. It's never going to be the optimal fill because the optimal fill, you've got to be on a limit. And it's not going to be a uh, turtle soup. If you're only trying to enter in on stops and at the market, you will never get a turtle soup and you will never get an advanced breaker. Uh, but as a scalper, I, I and 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 as a guy that needs a high strike rate, like I need wins basically because um, I don't have a lot of drawdown available to me. Um, as a scalper, the stop order should really be your preferred method of entry, uh, not the limit order. The market order is another option. Um, you can just smash the market, but especially with a block, you know with blocks so like for example you're sitting down here on Thursday's trading and you see this SIBI form that fair value gap you've got multiple options number one if you see that the market is treating this as an inverted fair value gap you can just hit it at the market just go long at the market stop below there or you can go one tick above that black candle which would be a bullish order block if it trades one tick above take a take a minuscule amount of drawdown and it continues you are on side so Every time that you're trading, you want to try and be on side. You want to be on the same direction that the high frequency trading algorithms are are taking you. Institutional order flow. And uh, you know, Michael doesn't really teach like what type of order you should enter on. That's he's a price analyst guy. He's not a he's not teaching you like, well, should you enter in on stop or on a limit? He doesn't really talk about that very much. But it has been my experience trying to scalp and trying to uh, hit high frequency entries that the stop order and the market order is, is just where you have to be because you, you, you want 
to wait for information and you're paying for information and that should increase your accuracy you're more likely to be on side with where the trading algorithms are going right now if the market has already shown a willingness to go down or if it's already shown a willingness to go up you are sacrificing points yes but usually it's going to increase your probability of success and Al Brooks talks about that right it's the traders equation um, and he's right about that like that's basic math and I, you know, the days, the reason why I have really big losing days is I am trying to enter in on limit orders below old lows and above old highs. And I'm repeatedly getting in situations where uh, that is not the right thing to do. Yeah, sometimes it works, guys. Sometimes it works and I get a beautiful, like, bottom tick entry. But when it doesn't work, it's really bad. And you're against institutional order flow and it's and it's uh, bad. I mean, it's really bad. So I'll show you some more examples of where we could enter in on stops. Let's go to Wednesday's trading. All right, so number one, you see that the market, one tick below that bullish order block would be a good entry on a stop. Um, here we have a SIBI, a fair value gap, institutional order flow entry drill. You could enter in at the market there. Uh, that would be another option. Or one tick below that green candle um, so you could enter in at the market as you see it respects the very bottom of that SIBI. That's an institutional order flow entry drill. You just smash the market. Yes, you're paying slippage. Yes, it's not the optimal entry. It's not the very top tick, but it's a higher probability of success. It's a much higher probability of success, right? You enter in on the stop here and the market's already shown a willingness to go down. So it's just more it's just a higher likelihood of of success now it's not always going to work so you try and take these three candles as an order block it moves in your favor now if you go break even you haven't lost any money which is good but it you know sometimes it's just going to turn right around against you and and that's one of the things that you have to accept is it's not always going to work uh, entering in at the market or entering in on a stop. It could just immediately, oftentimes it is going to immediately turn against you and then go in your favor. But it's one of the things you accept. I mean, there's there's balances to everything. If you're entering in on a limit order, you have the opportunity, the chance to be at the absolute bottom and the absolute top tick. But you don't know how far it's going to go, which PD array is going to turn it around, where institutional order flow is going to change. You don't know. You just don't know. You don't know which high is going to turtle soup. It's been my experience that there's no way for me to know. I have guesses. I have decent guesses, but I'm never going to be a professional trying to guess which high is going to actually be the high. It's just I'm not. So from this point forward, I am going to go back to kind of Al Brooks style trading and not using his other concepts, right, uh, but using his... Uh, trader's equation which is risk reward times probability and entering in on stops and at the market will allow you to be on side more often than not I mean you see the same thing here right black candle you know that's going to be an order block if you trade one tick above so stop order one tick above you're immediately in profit it immediately draws to that to that uh, SIBI that was over there right you're immediately on side you're with the trading algorithms uh, you're in institutional order flow. You could even enter in one take above that black candle and you still have a good scalp there. So even down here, guys, yeah, you miss the absolute bottom, but one tick above that black candle, it puts you in a little bit of drawdown and then bang, right? Very quickly, you're in profit. So if you're using order blocks, I love to use order blocks are kind of like my favorite thing now, even above the fair value gaps. But you can do the same thing with fair value gaps. So let's say that you see the market is here. Market doesn't trade back down to it. You smash the market. You just enter in at the market because it's probably not going back down to that breakaway gap. Or you could enter in on a stop above that black candle and these relative equal highs, that black candle, because you know that those are going to be order blocks if we trade above. So no more limit or no more limit order entries for me it's going to be stops or it's going to be at the market mostly stops and why am i doing that because traders equation uh, i i'm sacrificing points for more information and for a higher probability of success that's al brooks 
Trader's Equation, basic stuff. Go look that up, Albrook's Trader, Trader's Equation. Um, I wish Michael would talk about this sort of thing more. Like, yeah, sometimes the bullish breakers work, Michael, and, and you get in at the very bottom tick, but it forms multiple breakers, damn it. <laughs> so you're kind of guessing which one is actually going to do it. Um, I'm sure he would agree with that. Uh, anyways, that's been this discussion on entering in on stops, market order, and limit orders. Bye.